Um, what does it mean to be a, a Christian anymore? A lot, well, a lot of us Christian. have. I mean, what it should mean, what it should mean is, and, and, and I'm speaking psychologically again here, let's say, I mean, Christ is the archetypal perfect man. What, whatever that means, it's a concept that's really beyond understanding because we don't know our full extension. We don't know our full possibility or potentiality. I mean, Christ himself said that people, the people that he left behind could do works greater than his if they were willing to undertake the arduous pathway necessary to make that occur. So there's no animating the potential power and grandeur and nobility of the individual. But the problem is that it, it requires... It requires the adoption of, of infinite responsibility, let's say. You know, one of the things that characterizes Christ, technically speaking, is that he took the sins of the world unto himself. And that can be interpreted psychologically as well. Like when I was reading about Auschwitz and about the behavior of the camp guards in Auschwitz, I wasn't reading about some evil Nazi who wasn't me doing these things. I was reading about me doing them. And that's a terrible thing to, to apprehend. And to be a Christian, say, in any real sense, is to understand first that you bear the moral burden of the 20th century. And that it's up to you to do something about it. And not to change other people, but to put yourself together so that if the political situation warped and twisted around and you were called on to do something reprehensible that you would have the strength of character to refuse to do it. But to even develop that, you have to understand first that you're the person in the concentration camp who's having the, you know, the person who's just been hauled off the, the, the rail cars crammed in there like cattle lined up and then sentenced to carry a wet sack of salt that weighs a hundred pounds from one side of the compound to another and back. And that you're the person who would enjoy doing that to someone in such a terrible situation. Well, that's what it means, at least in part, to be Christian. It means to, first of all, come to terms with the fact that the terrible corruption and malevolence of human beings is something that characterizes you and that you have an obligation to understand that and to work to rectify it because the consequence of not doing it is dreadful beyond imagining and so it's very difficult for people to do that you know in, in Dostoevsky's The Brothers Karamazov there's a little story called The Grand Inquisitor where Christ comes back to earth and in Seville during the time of the Spanish Inquisition and he's raising the dead and performing miracles and being a generally good guy and causing a lot of trouble. And the Inquisitor has him arrested and thrown into prison and to, to be executed. And the Inquisitor tells him that the burden that he's placed on human beings is just too great and that the Church has spent centuries trying to modify his, his demand so that normal people could tolerate it. You know, and, and there's really something to that. The, the burden, the moral burden that's placed on someone who claims to be a Christian is so fundamentally unbearable. But the alternative is worse. So that's where we're at. You either bear the burden and the responsibility of constraining evil in your own heart and, and then trying to work to make the world a better place, or you exist in the hell that you produce for not doing so. I, I um, I'm by... Um the fact that courage really is um, a muscle and, uh, and, and misunderstood. Um, it, 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 you're not going to be able to rise to the occasion in, in horrific situations uh, like uh, in the past of the 20th century if you don't rise to the occasion now. If you don't, yes, which that's exactly right. Well, which also shows you that what you do right now, day to day, the way you conduct yourself with your husband or wife and at work and with your family, despite the fact that those things are day to day, they're not mundane or trivial. They're vitally important because you put your finger on it precisely. It's that under if you can manifest a good character under normal circumstances then perhaps you'll have developed the sort of character that will enable you to 
stand up properly in the midst of a catastrophe. And one of the things that I've been telling the people who've been watching my videos, say, who, who are overwhelmingly young men, by the way, is that they should strive to be the person who's the most reliable, who they should strive to be the most reliable person at their father's funeral. That's a good goal. That's a goal that it's indicative of the development of some trads of a proper tragic tragic sensibility with regards to life and and the formulation of some real character in the face of that tragedy. You know, and then young people now are fed such a diet of pablum. You know, they're told to develop their self esteem and to be happy and and to be free and to 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 follow their impulses wherever they might lead. And it's 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 not nourishing. Young men in particular are dying. I mean, literally, they're dying because of that. They're dying spiritually, and they're dying. Well, they're they're dying in actuality as well because being human requires a noble mode of being. You, you can't tolerate yourself if you if you're weak and and deceitful and arrogant and resentful. You just hate yourself, and that's. And then you do harm to yourself and to others. It's much better to be called forward to do something noble and courageous. And I'm absolutely struck, Glenn, that the thing that's been most surprising in the last year, I would say, is when I'm doing my public talks. And this is especially evident in this biblical series, which has been packed, by the way. It's sold out every day, every time we, we, we posted one, which is completely bizarre. But anyway, every time in those public forums where I talk about responsibility and truth to these audiences, mostly of young men, they're on the edge of their seats, man. You can hear a pin drop It's every time. It's intense. And I think it's because since the mid-60s, no one's taken young people and young men in particular and shook them and said, look, you know, you're not who you could be. Get your act together. You know, stand up. Tell the truth. Take your place in the world. And, 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 and fortify our culture instead of being whiny and resentful and weak and nihilistic and cowardly and ideologically possessed Dr. and immature.